What's up? It's that time of the year. It's time for me to get shocked by the microphone every time I touch it. I think it's a cold weather static electricity combination. Dry weather? Hi. It's also Wolf Den Podcast time. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's me. It's Will. On the on the main camera. Look at that. Look at me. Hey. Uh, how you going? Don't know why. Oh, and Bob's here. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Uh big show today, as always. Yeah. It's always big. Every time we do the show. Gotta be huge. Or why even do it? I could be home. Huge. Yeah. Uh big Pokemon leaks. Yeah. Huge Pokemon leaks. Yeah. Shocking Pokemon uh, leaks. A lot? There's a whole lot of them. A lot of weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Also a potential code name for the Switch. Yeah. Other stuff too. Nintendo Core using emulation. Oh! Sure, they got a good reason for it. They also came out with an alarm clock. Yeah. That seems to be... That seemed to be the big news of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Nintendo... Big news! Nintendo, Nintendo has made an alarm clock. The famed video game company has made an alarm clock that only works for single people. Yes. <laughs> no one will ever know what happens when you have sex in front of the alarm bell. <laughs> um, a whole bunch of other stuff happened. Yeah. Uh, but also, we should mention that we do... Um, we've been putting vertical clips yes of this show yeah. on youtube as shorts and mm -hmm. on tiktok we have a tiktok account for this yeah because we're cool gen uh, z some people would say that some people would debate that <laughs> i am gonna say if you are watching this live on twitch or youtube there are functions within twitch and youtube where you can make your own short or your own clip so if there's anything interesting or something you'd like to share with somebody, use that feature, and then it would make it easier for us to go back and uh, make a TikTok or a short yes. out of that. So use the built-in Twitch and uh, YouTube features to to make fun little shorts of us, and and that would help us out a lot. What we're saying is do our job yes, for us exactly, so that we know what you like. But if you're going to do it, for the love of God, name the clip because yeah. people just hit the clip button yeah. on twitch and then they don't do anything with mm -hmm. it and then we just have a whole bunch of useless clips right but the ones that people name usually they're pretty good right there you go that would help us out thank you very much uh that's it that's all i needed to get off my chest bb retro thanks for being here and thanks for the 38 months and gutter is a tool thanks for the 26 months don't be so hard on you <laughs> Uh, let's get right into the, the leaks. Yeah, let's do it. Massive Pokemon leak exposes beta designs, source codes, and plans for upcoming titles. This is as per Engadget. Yes. Uh, Pokemon developer Game Freak has confirmed it suffered a breach uh, as troves of internal materials pertaining to the franchise uh, from source codes to early and in some cases scrap character designs hit social media this weekend in a statement published on Thursday translated from Japanese. Uh, the company said it discovered its servers were hacked in August and that sensitive employee information had been leaked. Uh, it did not address the Pokemon leaks, though, uh, though a bulk uh, of this content appears to have been published online after the statement was released. Leaked documents and images flooded Reddit and Twitter after uh, Central Leaks began dumping it all on Saturday afternoon. The Terra Leak files, as some fans are calling it, allegedly include source codes for past games, including Heart Gold and Soul Silver, code names for the Switch 2 and the upcoming Gen 10 Pokemon games, uh, which are codenamed Ounce and Gaia, respectively, uh, references to in development Pokemon MMO, um, and an internal discussion form design. Um, Internal discussions from design meetings. There are also details on purported unreleased Detective Pikachu sequel and other planned Pokemon movies, as well as a new anime series. The scope of the leaks is enormous, exposing tons of beta character designs and concept art in addition to the source codes. Neither Nintendo nor the Pokemon company has publicly acknowledged the leaks yet. Uh, Engadget has reached out for comment. Game Freak said... Uh, 
Game Freak said in its statement that it's strengthening its security and apologized to those affected by the breach, noting that the unauthorized third-party access uh, accessing the personal information of over 2,600 current and former employees. Uh, there's also uh, the Central Leaks Twitter account is, mm-hmm. is the one that, like, posted everything i don't know if they broke all of the news but they were they were going nuts on twitter the other day uh posting all of the leaks some of this stuff looks just terrible like right well a lot of it is like concept art that looks like something you would draw on ms paint it doesn't look like concept art from like an actual concept artist (laughs) it looks like neopets stuff right some of it's just you know uh you're all run of the mill uh dev stuff but some of it seems uh a little far mm-hmm. out there i uh, like this like what the fuck is that <laughs> oh no <laughs> there was one that looked really bad yeah i mean like it's you know it's concept art and stuff i feel like whenever we see concept art we see like you know the most beautiful glamorous stuff imaginable a lot of the stuff could just be like somebody doing a quick sketch to like work yeah. something out yeah yeah you know? i mean a lot of concept are just fucking around yeah. but what is that you tell me that's <laughs> uh that you is... tell me an artist made that <laughs> that's clearly somebody fucking around as you said uh I, now i've seen i have my fair share of uh video game concept art books yeah uh i've never seen anything like that <laughs> Well, that one wouldn't have made the cut. They're obviously not cast. They're obviously not uh, going to publish yeah. that type of stuff. Uh, and of course, there's a bunch of other cut content. Some of it's like some weird lore stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's one that's been floating around about specifically Typhlosion. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that right now off off of the. Yeah, Central there's League's there's player. a lot. Uh, but that one is is this the one? Uh, no, this is about Slackoff. A lot of, like, weird, pervy stuff. Yeah. Pertaining to some of these Pokemon. Uh, here we go. Interesting info about, uh, Gaia Gen 10. Uh, this is from a meeting between Game Freak and the anime staff. They are talking about how the current anime has a little synergy with, uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, codenamed Titan, um, and is and instead is heading into a Gaia like direction. No idea what this means for Gaia, honestly. It's up for interpretation. They talk about how the current anime has similar atmosphere to Gaia, possibly due to developing the game alongside it. So that Gaia is the name it, of one of the games? Gaia is the name of the new game. Of Okay. Of the next Gen 10 Pokemon. And what is Ounce? I think I that's thought that the, was the dev name of the Switch 2. I think that is the dev name of the Switch oh. 2. Yeah. So the Gen 10 Pokemon games, both of them are codenamed Gaia. Okay. What the fuck is Ounce? Like, like, what is that? If that's the Switch 2, what is that? What are the other Switch code? What are the other Nintendo code names? The Switch was the NX. Um, I think it was Dolphin. Dolphin. The Wii U was, I think, Cafe? Yeah. DS yeah. was Nitro. Wii was Revolution. Ounce, I mean, none of those really fit into any sort of... Uh, Revolution does, because that was like supposed to be like their big change okay. in gaming. Yeah. The Dreamcast was Katana. That's cool. Yeah. That's a cool Sega name. Sega is cool. cool. <laughs> All right, so I have here the Typhlosion, uh, uh, what feels like a fanfic. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to go through it really quick. It is pretty long. Uh, the relationship between humans and Pokemon, human-like... Uh, ways of thinking long ago when the boundary between pokemon and humans was unclear there was a village somewhere one day a girl from the village went into the mountains to gather firewood uh she found well dried dead deep dead wood deep in the forest so she kept going further in before she realized the sun was setting and she had lost her way around her there were droppings from a typhlosion which made the girl anxious. Just then, a man appeared from the other side of the forest. His face didn't resemble anyone from the village, but he was very handsome. The man said, you must be lost, right? I know the way down the mountain, but 
with your pace, it would be midnight before we got get there. I'll take you back tomorrow morning. So why don't you rest at my place? So this guy's courting this woman. Yes. Uh, the girl had no choice but to agree to the man's suggestion. The man took her hand and began to walk. As evening fell, they arrived at a large cave. This is my home. You must be hungry, right? Wait here. Saying that, the man went outside the cave. After he left, a red light shone from far away in the mountains, and there was the sound of trees swaying. Before long, the man returned carrying red berries. He said, eat this. Then let's sleep for the night. Even if you wake up before I do, don't look at my face. <laughs> The next morning, when the girl woke up, the man was still asleep. She honored their promise and stayed laying down, waiting. Before long, she fell back asleep. She was awakened by the man's voice. When she looked outside, the sun was already setting. Today, we'll eat green berries. Wait here. With that, he went out of the cave. After he left, the same red light shone from far away, and the sound of the trees swaying echoed once more. By the time the sun had set completely, the man returned, carrying many green berries. He said, eat this. Then let's sleep for tonight. Even if you wake up before I do, don't look at my face. <laughs> the girl expressed her concern that her family would be worried and that she wanted to go home soon. The man yawned widely and tapped her on the head. At that moment, she completely forgot about her family and home. The two of them ate the green berries together and then fell asleep. The same routine continued with them waking up when the sun set, the man going to gather berries, and the two of them eating and sleeping together. Eventually, the girl realized that the man was a Typhlosion. Oh! Dun, dun, dun. I saw that twist coming. That wasn't a very M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> As winter approached, the Typhlosion dug deeper into the cave and said to the girl, Go and gather wood for firewood. Br uh, break off the branches from the higher parts of the tall trees. The girl tried to do as the Typhlosion instructed, but the tall trees scared her, so she could only climb the shorter ones. When she brought back some branches, the Typhlosion said, that won't do. If it's not from higher branches, humans will find us. When the snow began to fall, the two of them lived in the depth. How long is this? It's okay, very it's not, long. It's not that much longer. Oh, I, I saw, I see one that's like very long. Uh, this, I think this is the longest one. Okay. Um... I lost my place now. Uh, we're still going to fall to them, blah, blah, blah. The girl pleaded, please don't... Wait, your father is looking for you, but you are my wife, so I can't return you. I will have to fight him, the Typhlosion yeah, says. Yeah. Please, the girl pleaded, please don't do that. Don't kill my father. How can I live with you if you kill my family? You are a good person, so please stay here with me and sleep. All right, let's stay here and sleep. The man nodded. The man meaning the Typhlosion. Right. The next night, the Typhlosion woke the girl and said, your father is close by, go and see. When the girl went outside, a snowstorm was raging. She climbed a low tree and broke off a branch. When she returned to the cave, the Typhlosion was singing a song she had never heard before. You broke off a branch, didn't you? Soon your father will come here. I'm going to do something bad to your father. <laughs> if I am killed, take my eyes, my voice, and my heart. Build a fire at the spot where I was killed and burn them. And while they burn, sing this song until the fire goes out. That's, side note, that's what you're supposed to do with an American flag. After it gets tattered, you're supposed to separate the blue stars and stripes, uh, the blue stars from the stripes, and you bury them and you... Set them ablaze in two separate fires, and then you bury the ashes. That's that's what you're supposed to do, kids. Where they got this from. Yes. The girl said, please don't do it. Don't kill my father. If anyone is to be killed, let it be you. <laughs> Goodbye. We will never meet again. With those words, the Typhlosion went outside. After a while, there was a loud noise, and when the girl looked outside, she saw her father had killed the Typhlosion. She rushed out and said to her father, Father, you have killed my husband. I have been living with him all this time. He was my husband. Please give me my husband. The Typhlosion's <laughs> eyes, voice, and heart. The girl built a fire at the place where the Typhlosion had been killed and put his eyes, voice, and heart into the flames. She sang the song the Typhlosion had taught her until the fire burned out. The girl's father built a small hut on the edge of the village for the girl and her child to live in. Yes. The Typhlosion, let me just... Make it clear to everybody. Impregnated this 
I think we are well woman, aware of that. I'm hoping woman. This human woman. <laughs> eventually, spring arrived. The young men of the village often teased and tormented the girl and her child. It became worse over time. And one day, they tried to drape a Typhlosion's pelt over them. The girl returned home and pleaded with her parents, please tell the villagers to stop teasing us. If they put that pelt on us, we will surely become Typhlosion. We are already half Typhlosion as it is. What do you mean we? Despite the pa the parents pleas, the villagers did not listen. In fact, they found it even more amusing and eventually draped the Typhlosion pelt over the girl and her child. At that moment, they howled loudly and vanished into the depths of the forest. The two were never seen again. And so people came to understand Typhlosion are half human beings. That's how the story ends. Now, Bob, the big question here is, is this canon? Is this part of the Pokemon lore? I mean, no. Yes, obviously. But this is an inch away from a Pokedex entry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> obviously, this raises uh, 1,000 questions. That I don't want to know the answer to. Yeah. I'm happy leaving this to burn. Yeah, it, never it, is, it is fascinating that like it is that deep and complex of a backstory for one pokemon <laughs> so obviously when a game is made uh there's a lot of lore that is built out right and uh this was just way overkill on a yeah. very particular part of the lore and this goes way outside of the scope of what any pokemon game should, should tap into or probably would ever tap into yeah because that's a pretty dark story and, mm -hmm. and uh, has a lot of themes that they probably would never ever want to discuss yeah. but that's what makes it interesting is that this this is an official document from the pokemon company mm -hmm. or from game freak uh talking about the development of yeah the beloved typhlosion <laughs> and how he's a sicko yeah uh there's other stories too and we're not going to read them but uh if you're interested in those go to the centro leaks twitter account and you'll find big walls of text like you just saw. Yeah. And you can read one on Slack off, which apparently uh, scarred people for life as well. And uh, there's another one over here. Octillery? I don't know. But uh, yeah. Very weird. I think the uh, big... The other big news, aside from other just like cut Pokemon and... Uh, other concepts that almost became the Pokemon that we know now. Uh, besides all of that, it's just there's a new game coming out. Yeah, uh, and it's gonna be for the next Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I mean that, but that that's yeah, we, we could have told you that for free. We could have guessed that. Oh, yeah. also there was some stuff about a Pokemon MMO. Yeah, there were some files about a, a an, an MMO. That I think I think it's since been canceled though. It's not still in development anymore. But like, I mean, that's the dream, right? A massively multiplayer online Pokemon game where you they and your say friends. They say it's not in development. I don't think it's in development anymore. Well, that fucking sucks. Yeah. I mean, there have been. Oh, no, it is in development still. That's great. Ooh. There have been fan initiatives to do something like that. Yeah. I think there's one literally called Pokemon MMO. Yeah. Uh, and some of these things have some great ideas, but of course, uh, they're fan games. So right. they're a little like wonky. One of them, uh, basically took elements from like they it basically matched three games together it's yeah. like a rom hack of like three different games and then it also it is an mmo mm -hmm. um but it'd be nice to see an official pokemon mmo mm -hmm. now game freak hasn't been able to make a good game in a very long time so making a whole last mmo yeah i would imagine would be very difficult for them mm -hmm. but did you find information about that MMO? uh yeah, uh, an MMO being made for the Switch 2, codenamed Ounce, um, we appeared in the leak. The earliest we will see these games is next year, which is when the Switch 2 is expected to be released. Ounce is the Switch. Two, Corre just, correct. Just to be clear. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so the MMO does not have a codename. Correct. Okay. And that is a separate game from the next Pokemon game. There's going right. to be a new Pokemon game that's a yes. regular old shitty Pokemon game that nobody's mm -hmm. going to like. And then after that, at some point, there will be an MMO, which I would imagine would take a lot of development time. Yes. And I can't imagine that being any good either if they're going to be making it. Yeah. Hopefully they have some outside help for that. Mm -hmm. But there is potential for an MMO to be pretty good. 
That's what people want. People yeah. have been wanting an MMO for a long time. Yeah. People have also wanted some sort of like a different type of play type, like what we saw with the Legends series. Yeah. A yeah. completely different style of people Pokemon. People want so Skyrim at least they're trying. with Pokemon is what they want. Skyrim with Pokemon? Yeah. I just want a different... I just want them to do something different. Right. And Legends Arceus was a good step, but it wasn't exactly far enough, you know? Mm-hmm. So... I, I, I would give an MMO a try. I don't yeah. know if I would be willing to give the next Pokemon. Right? It needs to really like wow yeah. me because the last one really was like just all around horrible. Right. <laughs> uh, U73 Power says, Pokemon MMO will suck. The games have been so bad and look worse than other 15-year-old games. I agree. If they have a lot of outside help and really listen to them, there's potential for a Pokemon MMO to be pretty good. Uh, it's a very small chance, though, because not even just the main Pokemon games have mm -hmm. been lacking. A lot of other stuff that the Pokemon company has been working on has been right. pretty rough. A lot of the uh, uh, outside games, uh, the stuff outside of the main line, yeah. uh, they're fixing the trading card game. Okay. Like, for the phone yeah. you know they're fixing that but even that was like kind of mm -hmm. kind of rough so i don't know anyway that's the pokemon leaks yes kind of wild stuff i would say if you're interested in any of that go to the central leaks twitter account and just scroll through there is uh no shortage of content over there scroll through Ethel, thank you for the 60 months. Glad to finally have Gay Rainbow Wolf. Glad to be here. Is Hi, he in the doing? room with us? <laughs> <laughs> and Blackbird, thank you for the 30 months. Uh, okay. Next news. Uh, there's a Nintendo play test. Happening. Well, there was a Nintendo play test. Wait, it happened? Uh, I think so. Is it still going? I don't think it happened yet. Oh. So so they announced that they would be having a play test. Okay. Okay. And they said at 11 o'clock on Wednesday or something, yeah. they, they, they said, uh, we're going to uh, have this website up. You log in here. You click this button at 11 o'clock yeah. and we'll, we'll see if we choose you for the play test. Okay. Okay, go, go. All right, well, go, I was going to say, go so, go so it had the Nintendo Switch online playtest program, a 2.2 gigabyte download runs from October 24th to November 6th. What it is, is unknown. Ahead of the test, Nintendo is sending uh, successful app, uh, applicants documentation that includes various requirements. As revealed by Twitter user Oatmeal Dome, the documentation includes a request that you do not discuss or disclose content from either the Nintendo Switch online playtest program, test software, or or website with others. Um, so as many have now already pointed out across social media, it seems unlikely that all who gain access to the playtest will keep quiet about this nature. Um, rather, it seems very likely that as soon as it starts, the entire internet will know what it's about. Signups went live on Thursday morning and the playtest quickly filled up. Now fans have to wait till October 20th when Nintendo says when, when Nintendo has said it will reveal more information to learn what the program is all about. Speculation around the program is already rampant, uh, with some suggesting it might usher in the return of Miiverse. Others have wondered Ooh. whether it might uh, have something to do with the Nintendo Switch Online retro games, such as the release of GameCube games on the service. Uh, crucially, Nintendo appears to want playtesters to play uh, docked and with a strong internet connection, which has sparked oh. speculation that Nintendo is testing a cloud-based streaming service for Switch games similar to the kind offered by Xbox, PlayStation, and NVIDIA. The big question, of course, is whether this test has something to do with the upcoming Switch 2, which Nintendo has yet to formally announce. An official, the official Nintendo playtest page mentions more information will be revealed on October 20th, which fans have already said lines up with the anniversary of the original Switch reveal, which was October 20th. 2016 i did not consider that it could be a streaming uh thing it is a nintendo switch online playtest, right test, so it is gonna require an internet connection yes but i didn't consider that it could be a streaming situation. see i just immediately jumped to like some sort of multiplayer yeah like game testing because that's usually what these things are for 
I think, you know, if it is for something like Miiverse or cloud streaming, that makes more sense for it to be like this big and this secretive in a way. Cause that's like a product they don't want you to know about. Yeah. My first thought was the GameCube games, like mm-hmm. maybe uh, online multiplayer with GameCube stuff, specifically okay. Melee. That would be yeah. huge. It would be a huge deal if they just dropped uh, GameCube games and one of them was Melee and you yeah. could play online with like matchmaking and stuff. That would be something they want to test before they uh, unleash it upon the masses because that would be a huge game. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people w- would, would want to play that uh, and they'd want to work out all of the kinks for that. But... Now that this article mentioned uh, game streaming, think about that. Like the Switch 2 is not going to be that powerful comparatively yeah. to these other consoles. So if a company like Square Enix or uh, Capcom or somebody yeah. wants to release something for the Switch 2, maybe Nintendo has their own sort of streaming yeah. uh, platform that they could, uh, you know, lend them, that, 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 that they can... Uh, farm out to them so that these game companies would be developing for like a server architecture like like develop this for pretend like you're developing it for a 3060 ti Mm -hmm. and that's what the server will pretend to be and then uh you're streaming from from that yeah Uh, that would make a little bit of sense that would be less exciting yeah than gamecube games yeah, so cause so like um so like you said, Square Enix um they have the Kingdom Hearts series on Switch, but that's cloud streaming. Uh, yeah. Capcom put all the modern Resident Evil games on Switch, but those are also cloud stream. Right. So they're doing it on their own, and I guess if Nintendo has like one central like consistent architecture that they can use, that might open the door for more companies to use that kind of technology to get their games on Switch. Yeah, I think that would be a good move for them. Because right now, all those companies, I think they use the same third-party company to, right. to do the their own cloud streaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it would be cool if Nintendo was like, hey, we want your games. Here's a tool for you to do it. Uh-huh. Um, now, oh, and the technology in the chat says, uh, remember there were like shipping records for a wireless GameCube controller for Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, yeah. So everybody's already anticipating GameCube for Nintendo right. Switch Online. So that's why I think the immediate thought is this has something to do with those GameCube games. Right. But we don't know. We're not uh, 100% sure. I think it's doing a play test for just GameCube games uh, seems a little extreme. Unless, yeah. I guess, those games are online and are going to have something extra like matchmaking yeah or smash brothers um now this was last week when they announced they were going to do a play test of some sort mm-hmm. they said at 11 o'clock go to this website and click on this button and and we'll you'll enter the lottery we'll see or do it quick enough and and we'll we'll you know add you to the play test yeah. and i did it the second it hit 11 <laughs> o'clock and immediately rejected usually yeah. when things like this happen the page loads slowly mm-hmm. this time it loaded instantly and said no you're out you, you weren't quick enough in Japan, they did a lottery system. Right. So everybody just got to submit, and then they pick you later, basically. Um, I might have... I might be borrowing somebody's account to, <laughs> to do it. So uh, that means I'm not signing an NDA. So... There you go. But also... There's your loophole. Other people are definitely going to break their NDAs. Yeah. They did a similar thing for the... Nintendo Switch Sports playtest. Mm-hmm. Uh, they made you sign something that said that you can't stream it or anything. And yeah. I literally streamed it. I was on Twitch streaming the game. I won't. I'm not going to stream this because I feel like this is a little more sensitive. Also, it's somebody else's account. I don't want to yeah. get that banned. Um, but I'll definitely talk about it. Uh, I'm sure everybody else will already talk about it. I'm sure this will immediately be news. Uh, so this will start Thursday the 24th. So that's next Thursday. So yes. it won't be on next week's podcast. I'm sure I'll tweet about it, but uh, I don't know if each account is going to have the play test at the same time. It'll probably be staggered. So yeah. uh, who knows when we'll... I'm sure the 24th will immediately know what this is. Mm-hmm. Or it's possible Nintendo will announce something prior to this. Okay. And we'll already uh, have an idea of what this is. Well, I know they, they sent out an email say, like celebrating the three years anniversary of the Switch Online Plus expansion pack. And in the email, they say, uh, what excitement will the next year bring for Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack? Stay tuned. 
So yeah, when they say Nintendo Switch Online, uh, it's got to be, it's, it's got to be the the game. It's got to be the retro games. Yeah. What else? What else comes with the Nintendo Switch Online subscription? DLC. Playing Mario Kart together. Yeah. Yeah, but your friend might get in trouble though, Bob. Not who's gonna know. I'm not gonna stream it, so no one's gonna know yeah. what account I'm gonna be. You don't have to sign an NDA. It's the same as the Switch Sports. Don't stream or say anything. I mean, that sounds like an NDA in all but name, you know? It says on the Oatmeal Dome thing, you must accept an NDA before the software can be yeah. downloaded. So. But who, again, who cares? What are they going to do? Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I'm excited. We're at the time in the Nintendo Switch life cycle where... Uh, we're running out of things like yeah. there's no more games <laughs> so where there's gonna be some announcements happening yeah. pretty pretty soon this is just uh another inch towards some of those announcements yeah Mackenzie, thanks for the 28 months just saying hi oh my god hello hey. and uber yoshi thanks for the eight months good morning from thailand oh my god uh i guessed you in the food guesser last night i guessed thailand right Nice, good for you. And Farmer Gooch uh, with the ten bucks. Hell yeah! He must have gotten a raise or something. Yeah, <laughs> giving us the raise. Uh, by the way, the the gay rainbow wolf is because if you are subscribed for I th- I guess it's sixty months uh, on Twitch, the little wolf icon next to your name turns into gay rainbow. Oh, wolf. I think that's fabulous. I think that's five years, and that's the most okay. that it could be. I got it. All right. Uh, next news. Uh, oh no, this is breaking news. This was big deal news. That uh, oops. This oh was, yeah. This N- is this Nintendo is a, did a bad one. This is an oopsie. Yeah. Uh, this is from PC Gamer. The official Nintendo Museum appears to be emulating SNES games on a Windows PC. How could they? Oh, yes. it's slightly embarrassing. Says PC Gamer. Emulators are bad, remember, until they're useful, of course. <laughs> now, I saw this article everywhere. Yeah. Uh, because mm. it's seven from my quote tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nintendo has had a difficult relationship with emulation, and that's putting it mildly. The company has often legally... Why am I reading the article? <laughs> Chris Mack tweeted this at me while I was streaming on Sunday. It is a video of him at the Nintendo Museum. It's it's a slide. It, it it's four pictures. One of them is a video, and it's him. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Uh, it's very. It, I had to play it a couple times because, like, yeah. really hear. So so these controllers that are attached to the uh, displays that that they have. Yeah. Uh, this is a Super Nintendo displays playing us. I think Super Famicom. Mario World. Super oh, Famicom. I'm so sorry. Come on. He's playing Super Mario World, and. It looks like the Super Famicom Mm -hmm. Nintendo Switch Online controller. Yes. It's got a USB-C plug-in, and the USB-C is the same USB-C cable that you would have on a Nintendo Switch. Correct. Uh, It usually has a lock on it, so you cannot unplug it. Uh Uh-huh. He fucking did something. (laughs) (laughs) And he was able to unplug it. And I don't know if you could hear it, but it makes a PC disconnect sound. Yeah. So these are all running off of a PC, which is interesting because they could have just used a Switch. Yeah, that's that's what's shocking to me. Yeah. You know that and it's it, it's all Switch hardware until it's the PC. Yeah. <laughs> so very very weird that they would use a PC. Of course, is their intellectual property? They can do whatever they want. I mean, I feel like there are certain situations where using a PC um, would be the better option like if you're taking it this the uh they show this at uh in a uh, indie game the movie i think it was uh fez like he brought a pc to the convention um so because it was easier for him to like because it was all on the pc first of all second of all it was easier for him to like fix and troubleshoot that whether if it was running off of like a dev kit xbox or like a retail xbox it, it seems to be a custom uh I, emulator it's like a custom yeah. like overlay that they have on the sides yeah it looks different than nintendo switch online but like for this 
why wouldn't they just choose a switch you know <laughs> it, like, is, it is very strange or the uh the snes classic you know, oh yeah they could have used that, that or like a version of that like it's clearly running off of something that is running windows os is if it it's a, making that sound is it a challenge mode is it like trying to make you do something specific now chris mack is in the chat right now yeah he said it wasn't hard to unplug, but it's hard holding a phone in one hand and a control in the other. No, I completely understand. And unplugging with two fingers. Mm -hmm. So what is the actual kiosk like? Is the ROM different? Like it that why else would they have a whole separate emulator just yeah. for the museum? Um also people are bringing up the fact that on Nintendo's own website they have a section about emulation. Yes. And they equate emulation to piracy. Yes. Because uh how else are you going to get the games on yeah. there? So that's another little bit of irony for them is that they're very clearly emulating the game, but yeah. it's okay. When they do it, it's not piracy because... Because it's theirs. Because yeah. emulation is not piracy because they are wrong about that. Yeah, It's just playing games. No challenges. You just play for three minutes. Oh, so it's got a timer like built into okay. it. Is that the one thing? I feel like... I'm thinking of the arcade game. The play, the play choice ten, play choice ten, yeah. The okay. play choice ten has the has the timer on it yeah. as well. So uh, what you're saying is they created a ROM hack? Yeah, yeah that's they what it is. They created a ROM hack. They ROM hack <laughs> of their, their own, own game. game. <laughs> <laughs> what world are we living in? So yeah, uh, I, for whatever reason, they felt it easier to do it on a to to do their own ROM hack on a yeah. PC. They probably could. I mean, they would have to have a bunch of dev kits. Yeah. To do that, I guess. But again, are these dev kits running Windows OS? Like, it's a very distinct sound of like when you no, unplug your right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely a Windows computer. Yeah. It's just that they could have just used a Switch. Yeah. Or, like you said, uh, Famicom. Or, or uh, the, a Super yeah, Nintendo the, the classic. classic. Yeah. yeah. You you can Yeah, you can inject ROMs on it's just a ROM hack. Yeah. You just do a ROM hack. Just put it on anything. Yeah. They learned a lot from the emulators they confiscated. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> they might have, yeah. That'll do it. Kind of a nothing burger, to be honest. I know, but it is very interesting. Yeah. How no, absolutely it, insane uh, the internet took them. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those things where, like, it, it could lead to bigger things, you know? Like, it, it, it's the slight hypocrisy. Yeah. It, Nintendo could do whatever they want with their own games. Because it's not piracy, because they own the right. IPs. But... When they come out and say that emulation equals piracy. And then they're emulating. And then they're emulating. Yeah. That proves that it is not yeah. piracy. It's it's one of those things where, like, uh, I forgot which Assassin's Creed game it was. But, like, it the deluxe edition came with, like, a digital copy of the soundtrack. And that came with, like, a text document that was in the Pirate Bay version of the same. <laughs> it's like, who had it first? Did they yeah. steal it from the Pirate Bay or... You know, stuff like that. I knew that tweet was going to go off as I was, quote, tweeting it. Yeah. And I should have, I should have warned you, Chris. I should have <laughs> said something. <laughs> I have a rule when a tweet hits like a thousand likes, it immediately gets muted. Right. I just never look back at it again. But is Nintendo of Japan the owner of the museum and not some division that is named different? Who cares? It could be pirating their own games. Oh, yeah. like if they don't have communication with each other. Mm -hmm. I understand. I mean, they have to. They had to develop something for it. So, all right, uh, let's talk about Alarmo. Yeah, the biggest news of the week. <clears throat> uh, Nintendo has a new piece of gaming hardware coming in 2024, and it's not the Switch Two. It's the Nintendo Sound Clock. Alarmo, a new motion sensing alarm clock that will uh, rouse you from your sleep with the sounds of video games like Super Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and more. The $100 alarm clock includes 35 wake-up scenes from Nintendo Switch games. Users will experience immersive sounds and music from those scenes, uh, which are styled to match Nintendo's franchises. Alarmo will also track users' sleep and motion 
Uh, records, uh, records will keep track of how much you move around, similar to the Pokemon Go Plus Plus Sleep Tracker, the Nintendo release for Pokemon Go and Pokemon Sleep, the long promised but seemingly abandoned quality of life project. Uh, Nintendo Sound Clock Alarmo will feature various alarm settings, uh, Nintendo said in its press release. The Clock Steady mode features an alarm that will gradually get more intense the longer you stay in bed. Gentle mode offers a more consistent intensity level, and button mode is a classic snooze button mode where you've got to smack alarm mode or shut it up. Nintendo's new interactive motion sensing alarm clock also features sleepy sounds, soothing music that will hopefully lull you to sleep at night. Nintendo's uh, new alarm clock features scenes from Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 3, Pikmin 4, and Ring Fit Adventure. And if you have a Nintendo account and link uh, and link it to your alarm mode, you'll be able to download additional scenes from Mario Kart 8 and Animal Crossing New Horizons for free at a later date. Just what I've always wanted, DLC for my alarm clock. I didn't know you can download yep. stuff. That means you can hack it. <laughs> So that's the thing. A lot of people. Uh, yeah. So first of all, I have zero interest in this whatsoever. Right. I have the Nintendo or the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Mm -hmm. Used it for like two days. I said, this is some dumb shit. I'm going to never touch it again. And that would be the same thing here with Alarmo. This thing's a hundred bucks. Yeah. I don't need it in my life. But everyone's like, imagine putting a game on it. Yeah. And I was like, it's probably going to be really hard. People have hacked the... Uh, Game and Watch games, yes. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers Game and Watch mm -hmm. uh, and the Zelda Game and Watch, and it is a pain in the ass. Yeah, you open it up and there are a couple of pins that are like dev pins, and you yeah. can like tap into those and upload your own ROM and stuff. Uh, but it is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, this I watched Spawn Waves tear down because I was interested as well. What's inside? Uh -huh. So you can watch his video. If you're also interested, but this little puck right here is basically the whole thing. Okay. Um, what's interesting is that he shows right here the CPU that it uses. This is almost the exact same CPU as the Game and Watch console. Oh. Uh, those I think are slightly more powerful though. Got it. It's a. It's a. This is an STM32H. The other one's uh -huh. an STM32H7, which I think is a little more powerful. Yeah. But uh, that means you might be able to do something. Now, I don't see any dev pins. I don't know. There, I don't see a way to like connect a controller or anything. I'd imagine these little circles that you see around, these little like silver circles, those are ways you can tap into it. Yeah. Uh, it would take a lot of work. And uh, there is zero benefit to doing yeah. this because it's just a tiny little screen. That's all it is. Uh, there is motion sensing. And on a previous episode, we talked about uh, Nintendo patenting uh, their human presence sensing device. Yeah. People think that this was the device. And yeah. this is the reason they, they patented human presence yeah. sensing technology because this captures your human presence. Yes. Uh, and the FAQ section of the Alarmo webpage, uh, what bed sizes are compatible with Alarmo? Alarmo is compatible with twin to king sized beds. Uh, king sized beds, so nothing smaller than a twin. They also explicitly state that you uh, have to be alone. Yeah, uh, can the Alarmo be used if you have multiple sleepers uh, and or pets in bed? If there are more than if there is more than one sleeper in the bed, we recommend using button mode for the best experience. So it's not like it's completely useless. You just can't use the motion sensor because you're going to confuse the motion sensor. Yes. Too much motion. Yeah. Uh, where is the best place to put Alarmo? Alarmo should be placed uh, facing the center of the bed within arm's reach and no higher than eight inches above the sleeper. You also can't have a pet. That yeah. sucks. Well, it probably can't differentiate between a person and an animal. I thought it was supposed to be a human Right. Presence sensing device. Maybe this isn't the human presence Maybe sensing not. device. Maybe that's for the next <laughs> yeah. alarmo. Uh yeah, there are plenty of YouTube videos out uh showcasing this. Woods got one coming out. Uh he had one about the announcement. He's gonna have one about this device. Right. I think I just uh, ruined his surprise. Um so watch that. Uh I can't I I I I I don't know why I would want this. <laughs> yeah, especially after the Pokemon Sleep Plus Plus. If that didn't come out, I might be a little interested in this. I will say, like, I do think, it, like, when it uses the Mario uh, faceplate, it does actually kind of look like a Nintendo sixty four graphic. 
Wait, like, what? When you uh, when it has the the Mario face design, it does look like something from a Nintendo sixty four game. I think. Yeah, no, the design of it's really cool. Yeah. I I think it does look really cool. It doesn't look like a hundred dollars cool. No, it looks like a twenty dollar alarm clock. Yeah, you know, maybe fifty dollars. This looks like something that they would sell for fifty dollars at the Nintendo New York store. Yes, uh, with no motion sensing or anything, just as an alarm clock. I would pay at most twenty dollars for a device that looks like that. Okay, a hundred dollars? Hell no. I'm good. My sleep is just the perfect amount of fucked up. Eric, thanks for the 75 months. Happy six and a quarter years. You got any of that milk left? <laughs> That's a strange thing to ask me in the middle of a live stream. Yeah. Can I get a glass to go? I tweeted a picture of uh, all of my milks. Yes. I have a lot of milks. Yes. Mom texted me today mm -hmm. and said... Why do you have so much milk? And I said, because yeah, I fucked up, mom. I got right. too much milk. And she goes, you didn't answer me. <laughs> Why do you have too much? I was like, I keep changing milks and forgetting to cancel the other ones. She goes, uh, very inconsiderate of you or something. She was basically <laughs> scolding me for having so much milk. If you're serious about offloading those, well, my wife is interested in some of them. Which so. ones? Uh, I have so much oat milk, I don't drink anymore. Uh, let me ask her right now. I have so <laughs> much. The koala ones, I'm throwing out. Okay. I'm literally, they're going in the garbage. I hate the koala one. Do not buy the muala milk off of Amazon. It is bad. Okay. It's like lumpy. Yeah. That means it's milk. spoiled. No, it's, it's fake milk. It's, <laughs> it's, it's almonds. Because they have to thicken it in some way. Yeah. And they uh, whatever they use is shitty. Anyway. There's an oat milk brand called Malk, M-A-L-K. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I I can't seriously consider buying that because A, it's expensive, and B, there's a Simpsons episode <laughs> where there's budget cuts in the school, and part of the budget cuts is they replace milk with Malk. I think that's <laughs> probably where they got the name. There is no way that's <laughs> not a Simpsons reference. It's like Soylent. Yeah. How... how, how you're like, oh, it's people, haha. Huh? And they're yeah. like, no, that's where we got the yeah. name. <laughs> Malk with vitamin R. I. They definitely got that yeah. from that. Just buy shelf stabling milks. Nobody tell me what to do. I've <laughs> thought about this more than you have, okay? I'm the one with the milk problem. <laughs> what a problem to have. <laughs> uh, the Khalifa Farms one. Oat milk. Yes. Well, actually, no, I have oat and almond from Calipia Farm. Okay. I guess one of each? I don't know. You can have all of the oat milk. I don't milk. need all of it. <laughs> the almond milk I'm actually drinking. I will, the, browse, the... I will browse your Fine. pantry. <laughs> I'm trying to find a better almond milk than the Calipia Farms one, but I have yet to find it. So that's the best almond milk. So okay. I mean, I just buy silk and almond breeze because I'm a cheap bastard. Here's so. the, here's what I, I know it's just white water. <laughs> here's what I figured out, okay? okay? The A2 milk, which is, it's like milk, but it's supposed to be better on your tummy. It's right. regular milk. Yes. It is just whole milk. It's yeah. A2. That is great. Okay. What I've been doing is I've been taking almond milk, mm -hmm. and I'm putting a little bit of A2 milk in it. Okay. So it thickens it up good enough. Okay. So it's like a, it's like a mixture. That's what I've been doing. Until I find almond milk that's as thick as regular milk. Right. Almond milk? Show me the tit on an almond. Oh, that is funny. Yeah. Do, do I have a button for this? No. <laughs> there we go. Backlog! 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 I got all off guard. I, I thought you came in early. We're not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what is the backlog? Hey, the backlog this is part of Wolf Dead Podcast where we go through our video game backlog, every game we've ever bought. We put it into an Excel spreadsheet. Today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've actually played it. Uh, How many games we got? 973. Uh, 74. 74. Oh, Jesus Christ. Tom and Jerry, the movie for the Sega Game Gear. 
All right, I'm going to need a refresher on this one. Uh, okay. This was one of the games that came with our game gear. <laughs> so this is a video from World of Long Plays. Yes. And the whole video is 18 minutes long. <laughs> So I guess the whole game is 18 minutes long. I maybe look, we, we got, definitely never we definitely beat it. Never beat it. Like this is one of those, like, if you don't know what you're doing, it's very hard. Oh, it's all coming back. To yeah. Me. So you are Tom, the cat, and you are chasing Jerry, the mouse. You chase him through uh, several platforming levels. Uh, he is laying traps to try and stop you. You have to try to avoid the traps um hop over obstacles avoid other things in the environment that are like coming at you uh it is a fairly simplistic game uh it is based on the tom and jerry movie that came out around the same time uh movie is very weird the both characters talk even though they're supposed to be silent why am i talking to you about tom and jerry this is this is your cartoons from like your grandfather's time <laughs> period no none of you know who they are we watched a lot of uh cartoons from the 50s <laughs> yeah because like that's what they would air on like nickelodeon cartoon network so like and they were still good yeah they were good um i barely remember anything i remember that weird looking broom we definitely did not make it this far in the no game. i vaguely remember these platforms no i do remember like the graphics and stuff and like i vaguely remember like the soundtrack i, I do remember thinking like this is a very good looking game for like a game gear for a licensed game gear game mm -hmm. like the animation um the, the sprite size oh i remember getting hit um, doing that yeah this looks frustrating as all hell oh yeah uh which one's the jerry is the is mouse. The mouse yeah jerry is uh you're chasing him he's just throwing shit at you and, yeah. and making you basically stop mm -hmm. so you can't catch up to him oh i remember those bombs now there's the dog okay so we had only a few Game Gear games. Yes. Oh, this is like the boss. Yeah. I don't think we ever made it past this. No, I I remember making it past this. I don't think we. I don't think I made it past the second level. Because again, these games were very difficult for children. Oh, and there you go. The yeah. Tom kills Jerry. There you go. A lot of these types of games, for the Genesis and for the Game Gear, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they were licensed games. Uh, didn't make it past the second level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult. This is reminding me a little bit of uh, Gremlins. Yeah. Gremlins is notoriously hard on like the second level. Yeah. I think. Oh, uh, I remember this. Yeah. A little I remember this little maze You can game. like replenish your health. Um, so yeah, there was very little variety. Uh, we didn't have many Game Gear games. We no. Had, we had this. We had uh, G-Lock. I, I can name all the Game Gear can't games. Name them all. Um, yeah, G Lock Air Battle, uh, MLB PA Baseball, Sonic Chaos, uh, which you did an episode on, Sonic Drift 2, Sonic the Hedgehog, which you did an episode on, Sonic 2, Sonic Triple Trouble, Star Wars, The Majors Pro Baseball, Tom and Jerry the Movie, um, X Men Game Masters Legacy, and that's it. Some of those, we didn't have Star Wars, we bought that later. Yes. Yeah. The ones I remember playing the most were Sonic Chaos, mm -hmm. uh, G Lock, yeah, and the MLB game. I think the Majors was yeah. the one, yeah, and that that's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, this game uh, probably didn't like it. Probably as didn't. a child, no. probably didn't. Like yeah. It. What's I, interesting is that there is also a Sega Master System version of this game. Now, typically, a Master System version and a Game Gear version is the same thing, mm -hmm. just with better resolution. According to Wikipedia, they are different. Uh, according to Wikipedia on the Master System version, Tom adventurously chases Jerry inside the house, outside through the country, and then back into the house, ending with Tom finally catching Jerry. In the Game Gear version, Tom chases Jerry on a quest to look for hidden treasure, taking them from the house all the way uh, to an island where the treasure is buried. This so, is this is the Master System version. This, this is, is way different. It also yeah. looks a lot laggier. Yeah, surprisingly. Also, Tom is blue. He's not blue. He's gray. <laughs> looks a lot more detailed yeah i mean it's a similar vibe but yeah yeah different this looks worse yeah <laughs> i got i gotta say the game gear one i think might be surprisingly better. yeah I'm trying to see if there was like a rating of some sort to see how I, it was I like doubt uh, it. Uh, I, received according to again according to wikipedia uh sega force magazine gave it a gave the game gear version a 48 percent but Damn. the master system version a 77 percent really that looked worse i guess so yeah, even as a child, did not like this game. Yeah. So I would uh, not 
suggest this. There yeah. are not many good Game Gear games. No. Chaos yeah. is the only one, and that's not even considered to be uh, the best way to play that game, right? Yeah, the Master System version is the better way to play the game. I just found a... Uh, so I got Portmaster on my uh, uh, Amernic yeah. devices. Uh, and there is, you can just straight up download to the device a, a fan-made uh, recreation of Sonic Chaos. Oh, wow. So I'm going to try that out. Oh, wait, is that the one where it's like um, with the Sonic 2 graphics and stuff? The 16 It looks like that, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think I know which one that is. I wanted to play that. Well, you can play right after that. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, do not recommend. Yeah. Skip Tom and Jerry the movie. <laughs> the movie and the game based yeah. on the movie. <laughs> Thanks for watching the backlog. We'll see you at a podcast. Sometime. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. Oh, what a, what a game. I'm going to throw up. That's the great thing about the backlogs. Just some weird ass games we have. That's what, that's what, yeah. that's why the concept is so good. And then I remember these. Yeah. Uh, Next news, Ambernick has announced its first wireless controller. So there you go, Bob. You finally got some variety. The uh, RG... Did I? Because this looks <laughs> just fucking like an 8-bit Duke controller. Ambernick is expanding its extensive lineup of handheld consoles uh, into the wireless control... Uh, to include wireless controllers with the reveal of its new RG P01, which feature Hall Effect triggers and joysticks with minimal drift, uh, according to the company, the Anbernic RGP01 features an Xbox style YBA and X button layout. What do they mean, minimal drift? Because it has uh, Hall Effect triggers and joysticks. Well, you know what, then? If it's got Hall Effect, I appreciate they said minimal drift and yeah. not no drift. Yeah. Uh, will feature Xbox style YBA and X button layout uh, that can be switched to the Nintendo wow. style layout through software, but it's not yet known if reconfiguring the controller is done through a desktop or mobile app. The controller is compatible with PC, Switch, Steam devices, iOS, and Android. Wireless connectivity includes support for Bluetooth 5.3, as well as a 2.4 gigahertz connection uh, for reduced lag. Ambernick hasn't confirmed if a 2.4 gigahertz dongle is included with the gaming device uh, that is not natively supported, uh, but the controller can be used with a USB-C cable if you want to skip wireless connectivity altogether. Yeah, so that's interesting. Usually when these things come out with 2.4 gigahertz connections, uh -huh. there's a dongle in there. Mm-hmm. But there are Ambernick devices that have 2.4 gigahertz signals built in. Right. Now, Ambernick notoriously has fucking horrible firmware. Right. So there is no shot this controller is going to work natively with their consoles. Yeah. Maybe future consoles. It'll probably run like ass. It's not mm -hmm. going to be like perfect parity. But uh, there is potential that it might not come with a dongle and it might just use the Ambernix built-in 2.4 yeah. gigahertz connection, which I think would be a little stupid. Uh, it's cool that it has that option, but mm -hmm. come with a dongle yeah. so that things would be easy for, for other devices. Uh, the use of Hall Effect sticks and triggers should help prolong the life of the controller, but there doesn't appear to be switches on the back of the RGP-01 limiting the travel of its triggers to improve reaction time for first-person shooter games. The controller does include a pair of but of extra buttons behind its grips that can trigger pre-programmed macros when pressed individually or in sequence. Ambernick has even included a six-axis gyroscope for playing Switch games that support motion-based controls, plus uh, RGB accent lighting around each joystick, a feature the company has recently started to include in some of its handhelds, like the RG406V. We don't yet know uh, what the battery life will be, when the wireless controller will be released, or how much it will cost. The controller's features are comparable to the 8-bit Do Ultimate 2C, uh, which debuted last June for $30, although the RGP01 includes uh, support for more devices. If Amernick is targeting a similar price, that advantage alone uh, could make it the first controller worth considering over 8-bit Do's budget-minded offerings. I... Uh... It's going to have about the same build quality as their devices. Also, I'd imagine it'll be pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like 40 bucks, which is a decent price for a controller these days. I think it can't be more than 30. Yeah. Uh, having a macro button is pretty cool. How you program it, God knows. 
I can't imagine the software for changing stuff around on this thing is going to be any good. Yeah. Uh, I have yet to find a controller that has accurate macros. Like when you record a macro, uh, usually they don't play it back uh, like perfect. Yeah. Usually it's like a little slower, a little faster or something. So uh, interested to see how that works. Otherwise, it's just a controller that looks exactly like every other controller yeah like you type you go to amazon and you type in nintendo switch controller and this comes up mm-hmm. i'm also really confused why they went with a xbox button layout all of their devices use the nintendo switch button layout. i think that's because of all the devices it can support aside from the switch every everything uses the xbox layout yeah. And so if it's going to be used for PC and iOS and Steam Deck and things like that, like those all use the Xbox layout over the Nintendo layout. Yeah, they're targeting a wider audience. Yeah. But the audience they already have is going to expect the Nintendo layout. Yeah. You know? So you would think they would have some sort of a solution. For that that yeah. would be like the one thing that I would think would give me a reason to one Ambernic controller at all yeah. is having a solution to change between mm-hmm. button layouts, which we don't have this as an article, but game, sir has a controller that they're coming out, out with mm-hmm. that has a screen there. Oh yeah. It just, it just swaps them. I think it's pretty cool. I think the best solution I've ever seen is the eight bit do arcade stick. Yeah. Cause it has the light up buttons, mm-hmm. uh, the, the light up button legends next to the button. And then you switch to the other mode and it just changes. This to a uh, Tarantula mode. Pro is the one with the screen, right? I don't know. It looks like it's got the screen. Tarantula. Yeah, swappable layout. Gotta get, I got to get my hands on one of these guys. Yeah. This is it. So those little uh, buttons are, are screens right there. It's, a, it's a, I don't think it's a, like an LCD screen. It looks, according to the website, there's a gear. That literally oh. just like turns the. Oh, but it lights up. Yeah, maybe that's what. Probably got a backlight. But have you seen? We don't have this in the key, and it's kind of old. But have you seen Genki's controller? Well, which one? The uh, Pocket Pro. So this is this is wild to me, and I think I'm gonna like actually like be a little this mad. Thing? At, yeah. Okay, that is an eight bit do controller. So that's the thing. It's, that is literally an Ape Duke controller. They cur- like, it's currently on Kickstarter for the Genki Pocket Pro controller. In the Kickstarter this video, guy's got four of them. in the Kickstarter video, they say it is in partnership with 8 Bit Do. And only in the only in the video. Nowhere else is it like prominently featured that this is just a partnership with 8 Bit Do. Wait, that's really confusing. But like, first of all, why is it a Kickstarter? That yeah, pisses that, me off. That too. <laughs> I hate how everything has to be a Kickstarter. Like, if you believe in your product enough and you're an established company with money, Mm -hmm. show us that you believe in your product by backing it yourself. I, like, I kind of understand to a point, like, if even it looks like Boom Studios does this all the time with certain comic books, if they don't think there's going to be a big enough market for it, they'll go to Kickstarter to see, like, if there's any interest in it at all and spoiler alert yes there's a lot of interest for a complete collection of your power rangers comics because they're fucking awesome so but, like when hasbro does it i understand they yeah. do it on their own website yes and if they don't reach the goal you just get your money back yeah kickstarter doesn't always work like that right kickstarter you can just lose your money yeah also, th- a lot of things change between uh uh kickstarting it and the production of the thing i've yeah. seen devices just completely change into other things in in the middle of production so it's just it's stupid i think the whole idea of a lot of these kickstarters are are a waste especially if you have a company already like there are some companies like like genki that will just every single thing has to be a kickstarter yeah and uh I and Neo, everything's yeah. a Kickstarter. Like, and you're a you're a big company what, already. What really like grinds my gears though is the fact that like their controller is so blatantly a reskinned eight bit do controller. Like, I don't know. Like, if they're in partnership with eight bit do, eight bit do doesn't do Kickstarters like this. They could just oh, do it. A, says it on it actually. It, it says eight bit do on the controller. Okay, I, I thought they were just straight up ripping them off, <laughs> but no, it says it on. Honestly. Pretty cool looking controller. It is a cool looking controller, but like, why not just sell the controller? 
Like, yeah, what? no, there's no reason to kickstart this. Like, no reason whatsoever. All their other shit, like, honestly, like, the bag, sure. The little uh, SSD that you can get for your Steam Deck, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, 8 has been making this controller for God knows how long. Like, it is a great controller. It is. <laughs> like, no, it's a, it, like, we have several. So, I don't know. That's I have, just like, I have a fucking bucket full of these controllers. <laughs> He gives them out at Halloween. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a good idea. Nobody come to my house. <laughs> uh. So while we're on the topic, mm -hmm. uh, what's the new Ein device? Oh, I have no idea. Somebody just mentioned it in the chat. Griffinix said it in the chat. Uh, what is it called, though? It's yeah, because when dumb. you type in Ayn, it immediately goes to the author Ayn Rand in Google. Like, we need the... We don't want that. No. Uh, it's got an OLED. That's the big deal with it. Okay. Odin 2 Portal. This is from Android Central. Ayn Odin 2 Portal announced with an OLED display and plenty of power. This looks, this looks similar to... To another device. This this like a glass screen on the front. Am I confusing it with an Aya Neo device? Ein has announced its next Android powered handheld, the Odin 2 Portal. The Odin 2 Portal features a 7 inch OLED display with a 1080p resolution and a 120 hertz refresh rate. That's more than before. It will be made available for pre order through Indiegogo with the campaign expected to begin in the coming week. It sounds like it's the same. It's the Odin 2, but now it's got an OLED screen. Okay. Uh, I am not going to be making a video on this. If they happen to send me one, I will make a short. But I am not doing a whole video on this. A starting price of $500, that is a lot. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's the same processor. That's ridiculous. Powered by a Snapdragon Gen... Snapdragon G3X Gen 2. I'm pretty sure that's the same as the other device. The other devices. I gotta say, I've been using the Odin 2 Mini mm -hmm. to play uh, Echoes of Wisdom. Fucking awesome. Nice. That's great. It's a great little device. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not going to be better than that. This is bigger. Right. And I like the Mini. So I'm pretty sure that's the same exact uh, uh, process. Mm-hmm. Odin. Uh, yep. No. That has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This has a Snapdragon G3X Gen 2. Okay. What the fuck is the difference? <laughs> Versus 8 Gen 2. Uh, oh, it's just an overclocked 8 Gen 2. It's the same thing. It's the same process. Got it. Got for it, the got most it. part. Uh, I don't know what the RAM's going to be like. I'd imagine it would be pretty similar. So, really, you're just paying for the OLED screen and a higher refresh rate. Right. Otherwise, uh, I can't see that being better than the Mini. The Mini's mm -hmm. great. I like the Mini a lot. All right. Uh, we got a little bit off the rails here. Yes, we did. Uh, what else? What's the next thing? Next is uh, Valve uh, reminds Steam users they don't actually own a darn thing they buy, but GOG pounces on it and says that games cannot be taken away from you thanks to offline installers. Thank you, GOG. Uh, a subtle change has arrived through Steam shopping experience to drive home the fact that you are not that you are buying a game license rather than a copy of a game that you'll definitely uh, own forever. And rival storefront GOG already seems to be weighing in on the matter. As reported by Engadget, if you are... If you're about to buy a new game on Steam, you'll notice a new message pop up which reads a purchase of a digital project product grants a license for the product on Steam. This disclaimer appears as though it's likely re uh, related to a California law set to become into effect next year, which will stop digital storefronts from using the words from using words like buy in relation to things like game licenses unless it's obvious what people are spending their money on as part of a move to make it clearer to consumers what they actually own or for that matter don't own. 
Uh, needless to say, this new message on Steam has already caused quite a stir, so much so that it seemingly reached the ears of rival storefront GOG. GOG is famously free of digital rights management and offers its customers uh, offline installers for games uh, it sells, which you can download onto your PC where they can remain safe forever. So it's, un uh, so it's understandable that the site might have some thoughts on all of this. Uh, since checkout banners are trending, we uh, were thinking of putting one up ourselves. A tweet uh, posted on the official GOG Twitter account reads, thoughts on this one. The con the concept banner uh, in question says, a purchase of a digital product from GOG grants you its offline installers, which cannot be taken away from you. Uh, as was pointed out uh, as recently as September, when GOG weighed in on the upcoming California law, however, it's worth noting that GOG does, in fact, sell licenses to games much like other storefronts. Um, with that said, it clarifies at the, it clarified at the time when we when we said we let you own your games, we mean that no matter what happens, whether it's licensing issues, storefront shutting down, or even a zombie apocalypse cutting off your internet, you'll still be able to play them thanks to our offline installers. We want to ensure that your gaming legacy is always in your hands, not ours. With that in mind, there's no doubt many would argue that it's a better deal than what Steam offers. That's why competition's good. Yes. Because that's GOG basically taking on Steam and being like, we think we have a way to have a better value for customers. Yes. Buy it from us instead. Yeah. Now, that being said, still going to buy games on yeah, Steam. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because Steam is just so much easier. It is, yeah. But uh, I appreciate this. Yeah. And I, you know what? Valve is usually pretty receptive. Yeah. So there's a possibility that they can revert that. But... It seems like this article said that they're just regurgitating what the California law. Well, they're getting ahead say. of it. You know, we talked about it yeah. last week. California signed into law that digital storefronts have to make it clear whether or not you're buying a license or an actual product. Steam is coming out saying like you were actually buying a license to use the product. Um, but that said, you know, God does have a point because like with Steam, you do have to connect to the Internet in order to play the game. You do have to like do all this other stuff. Um, and like when you download the game because it's licensed, like it can be much easier, much more easily taken away from you. you it's know? possible Valve could now be working on some sort of offline install yeah, or something. Similar. I think so. Yeah. Uh, because I think Valve tries to have people's best interests in mind. I think that sometimes they miss the mark, but mm -hmm. they seem to be more on the ball than a lot of other companies. Oh, when yeah. It comes to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are private, right? They're a private yes. company. Yeah. They, they, they don't really give a shit. They have yeah. they they don't really answer to anybody. So um yeah, I think that maybe it, it's possible that they could be working on their own thing. Mm -hmm. Uh and there's still time to re revert that and I hope that they do. Mm -hmm. But uh Valve has a weird history with uh stuff like that. Like uh they got caught using Yuzu on their yeah. own on their own Steam decks. Uh, they did also uh, rat on themselves for for Dolphin being on. Steam. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, they're kind of back and forth. So I would hope that they have something uh, in the way of offline installers, something that gives yeah. us a way to uh, protect the stuff that we're buying mm -hmm. instead of uh, taking it away from us with that language. Yeah. Think. Anyway, next news, Xbox reveals limited edition Indiana Jones. Oh I just want to show, I forgot who sent this to me on Twitter. I'm sorry, but Ooh. yeah, it's a really cool limited edition Indiana Jones Xbox Series X with a controller that's like got jewels for the buttons and like a leather bound. That's fucking cool. Yeah. Wait a minute. Do you know where you can get it? You know what stores carry it? I'm going to guess in Nowhere. Nowhere, because you gotta win in a fucking contest. God damn. Kevin Kenson, <laughs> get me this Xbox. <laughs> to celebrate the highly anticipated release of Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, Xbox has crafted a stunning custom console and controller that pays tribute to Indiana Jones with an exciting twist. The hardware is encased in a puzzle box inspired by the game, and fans are invited to attempt to solve it for a chance to win the treasure within. Oh. More than 350 hours of craftsmanship went into creating the custom hardware and the puzzle box uh, that invites you to embark on Indiana Jones' newest adventure. Uh, forgotten ruins, uh, edemic puzzles, and hidden treasures await uh, any adventurer up to take the task of 
with this clever and challenging puzzle. Fans and fam fans and families can visit the Microsoft Experience Centers in London, Sydney, and New York oh. to experience a stunning display uh, for the holidays from November 12th through January 6th. You know where I'll be oh on January God. 6th. <laughs> solve the puzzle to end. Uh, solve the puzzle to be entered into a sweepstakes for a chance to win the exclusive custom Xbox console. On January console. 6th, we will march peacefully, peacefully to the over new... to the D Microsoft Experience Center. <laughs> solve the puzzle to be entered into a sweepstakes for a chance to win the exclusive custom Xbox console and controller at the end of the holiday season. Don't worry if you can't make it. Um, there will be an, a, there will be another chance via Bethesda's social channels. Uh, in case in a puzzle box is an Xbox Series X console with a time-worn yet beautiful design adorned with a golden tinge uh, that mirrors the allure of the puzzle featured in the game. Uh, in addition, there is an Xbox wireless controller to rival anything that you can find in a museum. Uh, the controller showcases a rugged leather look with golden finishes and bejeweled buttons to let players know they didn't come back uh, from your latest adventure empty-handed. This could also just be a Sonic controller. It kind of can, yeah. But yeah, so... In order to win this thing, you not only have to solve a puzzle, but you have to then win the sweepstakes that you enter by solving the puzzle. This is the coolest Xbox it really that I've is. ever seen. It's so cool. And they, they don't just let you they buy They never it. let you buy Xbox is the worst with this. It they really always is. have such cool designs that you can't get anywhere. Do you remember like two years ago or whatever, like when Starfield came out, they announced like the wraps. You could just buy wraps from yeah. the system to like customize yeah, it. Yeah, wrap it. They, Give don't, me the they don't make wraps anymore. <laughs> they made like three. And now they have another high profile game coming out. I would buy a solid gold Xbox Series X wrap if adorned with an Indiana Jones hat. Uh, this is why your your gaming division is sucking right now. Because you do dunk <laughs> it you like this. Give me the Indiana Jones and the Great Circle Edition Xbox. Ugh. What would you do with this? It would just sit in your living room. I it, I would literally. You would put it in a glass case. I would put it in a glass case. I would have to buy another display case just for this. The freaking the little the little tomb over there has a little slot. Yeah. It has a little home for the controller. That's cool. <laughs> This thing's uh, cool. This is the coolest thing you will never be able to get. I know. You have the Wonder Woman uh, controller. I do. I have that, that very high up. I I don't use it. It's uh, really a museum that piece. That was a Kevin Kenson special. Yes, I will, I will always be in his... I have a blood oath to him now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. but we will be going to the Microsoft experience, by the way. Yes. We will have to try yes, to get our hands I will on this figure thing. that out. Uh, is that that's just a store, right? I think so. Okay, let me just my, the Microsoft. They got rid of Microsoft stores yeah. like everywhere. There used to be one in the mall, and there's not one there anymore. Which sucks because I like to go there and play with the Microsoft Surface. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is just a store. Okay. <laughs> Xbox Cloud Gaming to let you stream your own games. Microsoft huh? is planning to support the streaming of Xbox game libraries next month. Sources familiar with Microsoft plan uh, reveal to The Verge uh, that the company is getting ready to test the ability to stream games that you own that are not part of the existing Game Pass library. Uh, as part of a long-running project known as Project Lapland inside of Microsoft, the software giant has been readying its cloud gaming servers to be able to support streaming thousands of games. Uh, this writer is told that Microsoft will first test its new cloud gaming streaming capabilities with Xbox Insiders in November before expanding them to more Xbox users and more games. The Xbox cloud gaming expansion comes in the same month that Microsoft plans to enable game purchases in its Xbox mobile app for Android in the U.S., Microsoft is able to do this thanks to court ruling uh, earlier this week that forces Google to stop requiring uh, Google Play billing for, for apps in the Play Store on November 1st. Xbox president Sarah Bond revealed yesterday that uh, starting in November, players will be able to play and purchase Xbox games directly from the Xbox app on Android. What's Microsoft's uh, work to enable uh, a full game library on uh, Cloud gaming is complete. You'll be able to purchase an Xbox game on Android and immediately stream it to your device. 
Project X Cloud, uh, Project X Cloud was supposed to launch with game library streaming in 2020. Microsoft then announced it would support your game library in 2022, but it never launched that year. Uh, the writer under the writer of this article understands uh, the work that has been completed by having to prepare key infrastructure for thousands of games instead of the hundreds of games currently existing on Game Pass. While thousands of games will soon be available through cloud gaming, uh, The Verge is told some publishers will still hold certain games back due to licensing requirements or deals. Microsoft is also working on a browser-based Xbox mobile site uh, that it was originally planning to launch in July. The store will initially include deals and in-game items, but will grow to cover first-party games eventually. Microsoft said in August that testing has begun on web-based mobile stores uh, and that work is progressing well and we will have more to share in the future. That's really cool. So, yeah, I like Xbox cloud streaming. Yes. I mean, I don't, I'd rather not cloud stream. But- right. Sometimes it's the easiest way to play a game and yeah. it runs surprisingly well a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. It is uh the best cloud streaming I've had since Stadia. <laughs> um so previously you needed a subscription to to use that, yeah. to use their servers to do the cloud streaming. Uh now it seems like you'll be able to play your game if you own the game. You could play it off of their cloud streaming servers instead of needing to play it off of your xbox this is a one up from what playstation does yeah where you have to you got it they got a whole ass device yeah and you got to use that device to remote into your playstation at home yeah to play your your game i think crucially uh the playstation has to be on yeah so they are they are adding games that you already own to the xbox cloud gaming experience so your xbox doesn't even have to be on you just have yeah. to have the license for that game already. So, so the your device doesn't have to be on, and also you're not bottlenecked by your shitty home internet. Yeah, we got great home internet. We we can. But be... the Xbox servers are still gonna be faster. Yes. Yeah, you'll just be bottlenecked by Starbucks's shitty internet. Yeah, <laughs> when you're at Starbucks yeah. playing it. This would be great if uh, there were any games that I wanted to play <laughs> because, uh, like, I want to play Astrobot. Yeah. But I don't want to play it on my PlayStation. Right. And I don't want to play it on my portal because yeah. it's going through the PlayStation. If I could play Astrobot on like this, yeah, maybe I would play it. Right now, there's no Xbox games that I want to play. Right. Uh. Anyway, I think that's cool. Next news: Sony PlayStation console. Uh, whether you realize it or not, music is connected to some of the strongest gaming memories, uh, whether it's the rousing choir of God of War games or the delicate flutes of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, the PlayStation soundscape has created some emotional moments, um, some of the most emotional moments experienced in entertainment. Um, as for the many lives music, as for the many live music lovers in our community, uh, Sony senior director of content communications uh sid schumann uh is pleased to share that the team here at playstation have been working together with roadco entertainment and gea live to develop a groundbreaking live music event that brings their most iconic gaming soundtracks to a lot uh, bring their most iconic gaming soundtracks to life under the playstation banner for the first time with state-of-the-art production this show will merge uh thrilling music cutting edge visuals and legendary video game titles into an ex- unforgettable experience PlayStation The Concert transports fans into an epic world of God of War, The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, and the Horizon franchises, among many others uh, that reflect our 30 years of making games uh, that have not only captivated players, but are celebrated for their breathtaking and immersive soundtracks, too. Uh, with innovative technology and world-class production, uh, fans will experience a stunning fusion of multi-layered visuals, immersive surround sound, and an all-star ensemble blending classical and modern instruments. The legacy, the legendary scores are from composers like Gustavo uh, Santolio, Santo, I know, I know how to pronounce his name, Gustavo Santaolala from The Last of Us, yeah, uh, Joris the Man from Horizon, uh, Ian is. Ashkari from Ghost of Tsushima and Bear McCreary, uh, Bear McCreary from God of War um, will uh, will reach new heights, offering fans a unique and deeply immersive live concert experience. Ah, uh, the only game concert I went to was it Zelda. I think it was Zelda. I went to 
take pictures of it for some okay. reason. Like, oh, I was in, I was like friends with somebody and they were like, oh, my friend wants us to uh-huh. give them pictures from this event. And I think it was the Zelda one. It was cool. Yeah. But I don't need to go to another one. Yeah. Except I would go to the Sonic one. Yeah. That looks cool. I'm seeing a lot of the Sonic. That's a lot of clips from the Sonic yeah. one. Uh, Cause they do the crush 40 mm-hmm. songs and that seems pretty. Cool. So like, this is cool. But the problem is, aside from like one or two songs, I can't I can't tell you what any of the music of these games sound like. Yeah, you know, like I, well, here I bet when it starts playing, you'll recognize a lot of stuff. Yeah, and like I guess because like they'll have video monitors up and they'll show like the scenes yeah. and stuff. But like I think it's not just me. Like I've seen this talked about other places outside of this concert. Modern video game music isn't as like lively as it used to be like it's not as iconic 8, 8 bit and 16 bit era yeah because it's more about like it's more like film scores where it's about setting mood and tone and atmosphere yeah as opposed to back then where it was like you know essentially another character in the game so that's why the sonic music fucking rips because yeah. they, they, they still <laughs> adhere to that you know yeah. m- mindset yeah none of the playstation games are gonna make me go nuts like yeah and like The Last of Us has an amazing it does soundtrack, but yeah. not something that's gonna make me go nuts. Yeah, <laughs> like outs- I'm not gonna go whoa, yeah, playing this song. Outside of like the theme, like I can't really like differentiate like all the music in The Last of Us. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit there and go and be like, I want to listen to the level, uh, where where he kills the doctor. Like, I, like I don't yeah. know what like music that sounds. A like. ripping guitar yeah, solo, you know. <laughs> I'd imagine it's like medleys from each game. Like yeah. They're not going to play that much from The Last of Us. No, yeah. No, it's going to be a compilation. But like like I say, you know, like I don't remember what the songs sound like when uh, f- what's his face, the head that Kratos carries around when he realizes who Kratos is. I don't remember what that song is. Mm-hmm. So I do remember what the song is when you're snowboarding down the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> heading away how from- could you forget? Yeah. And I've seen many a clip on Twitter of that concert and people yeah. going nuts when that <laughs> song goes up uh so this will be a worldwide thing uh that launches on october 19th next year in dublin uh ireland before heading out to 200 more cities across europe the uk united states and beyond uh they're only announcing european dates at this time uh eventually they'll have more in the weeks ahead so yeah not gonna go. Next pay- <laughs> payday three launch was disastrous. Starbreeze admits, but huge changes are coming. Uh, it's been a tough year for Starbreeze and for pay- payday three players, but the highest FPS has every chance of making a valiant comeback. I launched the mo- the much anticipated sequel to the beloved payday two, absolutely tanked, afflicted by so many technical issues that players literally could get into a match. Uh, even when the servers were straightened out. Many gameplay features that the series faithfully had uh, that the series faithful had come to expect were missing. Core systems had been redesigned, and the general experience compared to Payday 3's predecessor was found want uh, found wanting. Nevertheless, the crime shooter has been passed has passed a crucial milestone, earning a mostly positive rating from on Steam for the first time. Speaking exclusively to PC Games N, um, lead pro- lead producer Andreas. Um, Penninger and community head uh, Almira Listo explained how Starbreeze is building a better future for Payday 3. We're, we're not reading this whole article. No, it's just basically like they know they fucked up and they're working on making it better for the future. I liked Payday 2 a little bit. I only played it on the Switch, so that was like the worst version yeah. to play. I liked the idea of Payday because it reminded me of like a tactical shooter similar to like the Rainbow Six that I liked. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Payday 3 seemed to just be the same as Payday 2. Like, right. like it came out like 10 years later and nothing had, was advanced or, or changed, it seemed. Well, there was that, but also too, servers were broken and like weren't operational for extended periods of time. The game itself was like buggy and glitchy and didn't like work properly. Right. Certain systems that like fans of Payday expected to be there weren't there or were changed. Um, so yeah, like... It just, it seemed like a surefire hit and then like they did everything wrong. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm personally looking for. Like I want that sort of tactical shooter again, yeah. but uh, 
I want it to feel from like the old school tactical shooters, but have a lot of you know modern accompaniments yeah. that modern games have. Yeah. Um, and I haven't found that yet. Although there is that one game, Ready or Not, that looks really good. Yeah. Uh, last news: Bandai Namco pressuring staff to quit. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is wild. Um, Japanese game company Bandai Namco is reportedly sending staff to expulsion rooms where they oh. had nothing to do after a number of projects were canceled, including one said to be for Nintendo. Bloomberg reported that Bandai Namco, which publishes multi-million uh, selling games like Elden Ring, Tekken 8, and most recently the three million selling Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, is cutting its workforce after canceling several games due to lackluster demand. The report also alleges that Bandai Namco is sending workers to uh, Odiashi Beya, or expulsion rooms uh, where they are given nothing to do. This, Bloomberg alleges, is putting pressure on them to leave voluntarily. According to the site, Bandai Namco Studios, Inc., the video game division of Bandai Namco, has moved about 200 of its roughly 1,300 employees to expulsion rooms, and nearly 100 have resigned with more expected to leave in the coming months. Japan has strict labor protection laws that make it harder to cut staff than in other countries, such as in the U.S. Expulsion rooms are therefore sometimes used by companies to drive staff to become so disheartened that they resign voluntarily and thus are ineligible for severance uh, they would normally receive had they uh, been made redundant. In a statement given to Bloomberg, Bandai Namco has denied pressuring staff to leave voluntarily, but did confirm the cancellation of games in development and revealed some employees are now waiting for work on their next project. Oh, they're just waiting in the expulsion They're waiting room. for work, yes. <laughs> Our decision to discontinue games uh, are based on comprehensive assessments of the situation, Bandai Namco said. <coughs> uh, some employees may need to wait a certain amount of time before they are assigned their next projects, but we do not move forward with assignments as new projects uh, emerge. Uh, this is no organization. This is no organization like in uh, Odiashi Beya at Bandai Namco Studios, designed to pressure people to leave voluntarily. Bloomberg reports that Bandai Namco has suffered financially in much the same way as other video game companies have post-pandemic, with big losses coming from write-downs tied to game cancellations. It alleged that Bandai Namco had recently stopped development on games that feature characters from Naruto and One Piece, as well as one project commissioned by Nintendo. The, uh, the mystery canceled Nintendo game was not named. Uh, Bandai Namco Studios has... Uh, for a number of years, developed games for Nintendo, including po uh, Smash Brothers, uh, Pokemon Tournament, and new Pokemon Snap. In November of 2023, Bandai Namco announced the team. Uh, Bandai Namco announced that the team it had set up to do uh, contract development for Nintendo as Bandai Namco Studio 2 and Studio S, promising more to come. On the studio's new website, a statement reads: Bandai Namco Studio 2 and Studio S uh, has has been a studio specializing in contract development projects we have cooperated in the development of many world-class titles such as smash brothers mario kart 8 deluxe and mario kart tour they recently released dragon ball sparking zero and i have not heard good things about it really? but it got an 82 on metacritic it's it sold 3 million copies in 24 hours and it has an 8.8 .8, uh, metacritic score yeah so. ign gave it a seven respectable okay. so i mean that sounds about right for a dragon ball game yeah I guess people just like Dragon Ball. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else uh, uh, Bandai Namco has been working on. Sandland recently came out. It's uh, Elden Ring. They helped publish. Uh, Tekken 8 is a Bandai series. Although, I don't know if Tekken 8 was received well by the community. It's hard to tell with yeah. them because a lot of them are like, the best Tekken was three you know <laughs> yeah like the fighting games like the, the game will come out and will be like functionally good yeah but like you know oh uh the punching is different in this by like two frames so therefore yeah. street fighter 2 is still the best street fighter or yeah thing like that street fighter super turbo <laughs> x alpha um yeah, Bandai and Amco is hit or miss. Sometimes they'll release something yeah. that is just fucking hot garbage, and sometimes they'll release Elden Ring. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> they just have a lot. They yeah. do, they release a lot of stuff. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, was that it? That was it. Oh my god! Wow. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Somebody sent this one to me by Bryce. Just a picture <laughs> of a Typhlosion seemingly reading yeah. off of a laptop, and he is horrified. 
As he should be. <laughs> Throw back to our yeah. main story of the night. All right. Now we're going to talk to you guys. Yes. Let's start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So, Charlie Fenn last week, he said, talking about multiplayer, what stats would interest, them, would interest me more is how many are interested in local multiplayer. Only Nintendo really seems to offer that now. At least I can only think of them. With Mario Party, Mario Kart, Super Smash, etc. Do you think there's an older generation thing? Or do you think they still do it for the kids? I think that that is a thing that has not been prioritized. Uh, yeah. People are less interested in it. And it is more difficult to develop for. There's also the the thing that like you know, if if it, if you focus on online multiplayer, that means that more people have to buy copies of it in order to play more. Yep. So there's there's definitely a business uh, thing to it. Every once in a while, you'll see a game that like does feature like local multiplayer. You know, it's usually sports games and fighting games. Um, some uh, Halo still does it. I know. I think Call of Duty uh, Call of Duty still does it. Halo uh, did it to their detriment. It was uh, it pushed back a lot of the development of Halo Infinite. The co-op single player, yeah, is what pushed it back. The split screen multiplayer, I think, wasn't necessarily the problem. Right. Right. So, I mean, back in our day, mm -hmm. a lot of couch co-op that was added into 3D games, like around the Xbox 360 mm -hmm. era, a lot of that stuff was unique campaigns or a completely different uh uh ui experience that needed to be specifically yeah. developed for uh so it's not easy to just slap that on to a game especially these days yeah uh and less and less people using it so less and less of a reason for developers to even care mm-hmm and it takes a lot of uh, processing power too, to yeah. render two different versions of the same game on one device. So mm -hmm. I understand why developers are uh, not doing it so much. It doesn't make sense for some games. Like right. there are some like 2D games that like just doesn't make any goddamn sense yeah. why there wouldn't be a couch co-op. I think there was like a was the new sonic game i think doesn't have couch go off. something there was like something like that like yeah. like there was a 2d game that had multiplayer uh and it just didn't have a uh, couch go up yeah or maybe the sonic game didn't have online multiplayer i don't it was, know it was, uh superstars right yeah it has multiplayer but yeah something was fucked with it either it didn't have online or it didn't have couch co-op yeah Anyway, the tech dude says, Will, have you been watching The Penguin? If oh, yes. So, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. It's so good. Last night's episode, this last week's episode was fantastic. Oh, my God. More people need to start watching The Penguin. Okay. It's like, no, seriously. Well, Hannah said, uh, do you want to watch The Joker so we can watch Joker 2? And I said, no, I'm not watching Joker 2. Yeah. I do not want to see that. And she uh goes... She goes, we got to know for Batman. And I was like, no, we don't. Yeah. We don't. She goes, okay, what about the Penguin? And I was like, maybe the Penguin. Yeah, no, absolutely watch the Penguin. Joker Joker 2 is coming to streaming at the end of the month. I'm not going to. I'm, 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 dude, I want to know what the, how fucking bad this movie <laughs> is. Like, I like I was in a, I'm an original Joker hater. Like, yeah. everyone thought, like, oh, well, you're a stupid idiot. You mother soy boy. That movie was never good. Everybody's just got something wrong with them yeah <laughs> when the movie came out everybody was like that was amazing i was like what the fuck is yeah, everybody no, on like it, it was such it was an amazing movie if you ever thought about shooting up your school yeah then you liked that movie <laughs> it was such try hard nonsense edgy that, yeah. bullshit and then the sequel was like that but also a musical i'm like i need to see like people, how people people thought it was artsy and i don't like the shots were nice yeah but like, like it, that's like, the end of it it was a well shot movie i did think the acting was very good yeah i there there were honestly moments where like joaquin phoenix i'm like he could actually like pull off like a 70s style joker like it, it's right there i can see it it's just everything else just fucking ruined it for me yeah 
there's not a, my biggest issue is there is not a single likable character in the whole movie. Right. My biggest issue with it, and it kind of proves my point, and it's actually an issue I have with the Penguin, but I'll get to that in a second. The Joker does not exist without Batman. That movie would have benefited from some sort of Batman. Like, yeah. not Bruce Wayne as eight, year, eight years old, but like the presence of a vigilante who dresses up like a bat. Like, it would have benefited the movie in some capacity. Yeah, you can't joke without Batman. Exactly. But, but the reason why is because there's nobody to root for. Yeah. Everybody is rooting for the Joker, mm -hmm. but he is a horrible person mm -hmm. who does terrible things that you should not be rooting for. So th that's why you, you're clamoring for, yeah. for some sort of hero. Yeah. With regards to Penguin... I do watch the show and I'll turn to my wife and go like, you know, Batman should be aware of what's going on right now. Like there's shootouts in the street. Like he should know what's going on, but at least in that context, like, you know, Batman exists in that world. So like the threat of Batman is still there. Mm -hmm. And like, you're now focusing on like a side story to the main story, which is, you know, whatever the Batman movies are going to tell. But like, yeah, the, the presence of Batman just looms large over penguin like i don't know what's like not to spoil anything but like next week would be the perfect opportunity for batman to show up and be like something happened but i don't think that's gonna happen but he's yet. i think he's confirmed that he's robert pants is not yeah anywhere near this no thing. it's confirmed but like i'm saying like there's always like the you know the threat of batman is mm -hmm. the ever present like it would make sense for him to show up right but that doesn't detract from the fact that the show's fucking rules <laughs> How many episodes are there? So Four. Far? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the stream's down. I don't know if, what's going on. Oh, man. You missed all my penguin talk. Uh, maybe we got uh, DDoSed for shit talking uh, the Joker. Mm. Uh, we're just going to keep going. I don't yeah. know. I'm not, I don't want to stop the stream. We're at the end of it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? We got Luke Antone who says, do you think we'll see a Switch to light eventually? Not at launch. Not anytime soon. Yeah. There are those rumors that there's going to be two SKUs, but I think those are colors. Yeah. It'd be cool if they had a smaller device. But yeah. I doubt they're going to do that. It's a me, Eric says, jokes on Sony. I. What? I bought a Horizon Zero Dawn Steam key for $4. So the upgrade is still way less <laughs> than the original price. Take that big corpo. That's one. There you go. Right That's how you do it. Uh, and then Nameless Silent. Says Ah Balatro, Eagle Crack. I did download Bal Balatro onto my phone. I haven't played it yet. I feel like I need to get on that. I've been playing too much of it. Yeah, I stay up for a long time because <laughs> you do a run. It, right, it's, you know, it's like a roguelike, so you yeah. do a run and you feel like you can't stop. <clears throat> I tried to put it on my Ambernick and I couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get the Mac App Store version. The okay. the 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 the. the Apple Arcade version. Yeah. Probably because I don't know what it is. It's Apple right. Arcade. But whatever. Uh, put a one in the chat if you see us. I think we're back, but it's choppy. I don't know what is called. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. Again, at the end of the show. So yeah. we're just gonna... um, well, this is the part of the show where we would normally talk to the chat, but yeah. uh, our chat is uh, not with us. Hey, Edward Bova says, Bob, this is so effed up. This is so up your alley? Yeah, this is up your alley. Steve Job unveils the PS1 emulator for the Mac. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. Uh, that uh, obviously did That's not what got go Bleem well. in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, YouTube. Uh, they're typing ones. There you go. All right. Uh, give us something to talk about. Audio is fine, but video is one frame every two seconds. Okay. Uh, here we go, because instant hologram. Considering the Switch has weird power delivery, doesn't it, it make sense for them to emulate on PC instead of permanently docking switches? I think docking them may make them uh, susceptible to orange screening. First of all, I don't know what an orange screen is. Yeah, I never heard of Second orange Second of screening. all, that is a good point. Yeah. Because having a battery <laughs> in the device that's always docked is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. That might be the reason they did that. But also, I have one that's been docked for and on for three years, and everything's <laughs> fine. 
I would imagine like they could easily make a custom. We're down on Twitch again. They could easily make like a custom um, switch that doesn't have the battery, but it's just plugged in, you know? Yeah. I mean, it would be easier to just do it on a PC. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I understand mm -hmm. uh, that that sounds like the, the most probable mm -hmm. answer. Um, what about Sony trying to bring Concord back? That's something we didn't talk about. Um, I don't know. It just looks like they keep updating it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's better than just pulling the whole thing down. Like you spent so much money on this. Why not just, uh, leave yeah, it Yeah. Like do something with it. Try to make it work. You know, Yeah. don't try to put too much money into mm -hmm. it, but Sir Griffinick says, uh, did you guys catch the news about valve confirming future hardware during the steam deck Australia launch could be a deck two or some sort of console. I did see they launched in Australia. I did not see Congrats. anything else. Oh yeah, now Wood can play finally. Uh, I did not I see said. anything. <laughs> I did not see anything else about like future content. I did not either. Products, uh, yeah, I'd imagine we'll see some sort of new hardware next year. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. I don't know if it's going to be a Steam Deck two or if it's going to be like a smaller Steam Deck, but I yeah. imagine next year we might get a little something. Uh, who knows what that is. I think that said disconnecting. That's probably saying reconnecting. Yeah. Um. So, what would both of you like to see in Nintendo do with their next gen console? Any must haves? I think should be the day one. <coughs> I would like a little small little device. Uh, backwards compatibility is probably like the biggest thing. Easily transfer of your stuff from one device to the next. Just an account system, so I yeah. can just turn it on and download all mm -hmm. the games that I already have. That would be the nicest thing. Otherwise, I just want a switch that's more powerful. I don't really uh, care yeah. otherwise. I just want it to uh, at least match the Steam Deck in quality. Mm -hmm. All right. We got to leave. Thank you for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden and youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we we'll always put the archive version up over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast so you can check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com no matter where you get the show from though folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps with the placement on all of those respective platforms don't forget to leave us clips even though the live version is choppy at the end sorry about that <laughs> uh i don't know if i'll be streaming on thursday uh i might be at comic -Con. uh what else i'm gonna have a video up on portmaster uh i'm gonna have a video up about portmaster hopefully on thursday i gotta go film that right now uh what else i don't know have a ha enjoy yourselves everybody uh i guess we will raid uh aj the same person we always raid <laughs> uh and then i will see you all later thanks for being here and hanging out goodbye bye